What the heck is breadcrumbing? Let's explore this on today's Ask a Shrink. Think about the term breadcrumbs. It's what's left over, right? It's a little smidgen of something that's fallen to the ground. In a way, it's like settling for scraps, right? So in psychology, the term breadcrumbing is used from time to time. It's not an official diagnosis or anything, but it refers to a pattern of behavior. And it can occur in work, romantic, family, and social situations. Let's look at where this may start. It starts in childhood. So if a child is raised where they don't feel important and valid and visible, well, then they may begin to settle for breadcrumbs going way back to when they were a kid. Either somebody who's doing the breadcrumbing, why are they doing it? They're learning to do it for some reason. Or for the recipient of being breadcrumbed, why are they tolerating this? So someone doing the breadcrumbing is not putting out much effort. They're giving signs or signals that somehow they're involved or they care. It only comes now and then. It's being done in a way as a form of manipulation that strings somebody along. This is very common in romantic relationships, although it can occur in many aspects of our life. Showing interest when you want to. You don't want to completely lose touch or control over somebody. So you throw out breadcrumbs when you want to. This draws in the interest of whoever, in this case I'm talking about a romantic partner, but then they quickly revert to their inattentiveness once they get to some degree what they want. They're not able to commit to anything. Now, as I mentioned, stringing somebody along in romantic relationships, the dating world, or even online when you think about going to dating apps, setting up a profile in a certain way, or interacting with somebody online, which is very different from how the person is in real life, of course, or in toxic family dynamics. This involves giving conditional love versus unconditional love. You'll give the conditional love when you want something, when a parent needs or wants something to satisfy themselves. Now with friendships, we could also say acquaintances, and I also mentioned social media. There's a lot of ghosting involved. That's one thing you're gonna see for sure. Somebody who's around when they think they can get something, and then when they get it, they don't want the person around anymore. And it can even happen at work situations, of course. So let's say somebody owns a business, dangling possible promotions in front of some of their employees, dangling raises. They can certainly breadcrumb you to get you to do what they want. So it ranges all the way from somebody being very inconsistent and they just can't keep their word about something all the way to a full-blown manipulation let's say from a narcissist for example you're being used there may be some actual emotional abuse or some sort of neglect going on so the continuum is quite wide isn't it if this is happening to you in your life notice that you're getting something and there's always a sense of potential for more I'm going to get more. Somehow it's getting better because they're giving you little tidbits, little breadcrumbs. And so now you're in waiting mode or hoping mode. That's not a healthy place to be in. So you may notice with the breadcrumbers that they, they act like they're very concerned. You can tell it feels a bit phony. Perhaps their mood, their attitude, their feelings run very hot and cold, very black and white. And you get these little tidbits of communication from time to time. Just enough to lure you in, it seems like. And it seems to work. Now, if you're the breadcrumb meaning it's happening to you, you're going to feel quite often very lonely and isolated. What's going on here? Depending on what sort of relationship you have with this breadcrumber, maybe over time it becomes more clear what's going on and you're going to feel used and taken advantage of. Maybe you learned this in childhood. Maybe you were taken advantage of by your own parents. You're waiting for some reward. Well, what's this reward that supposedly is going to come? Ask yourself that. That can cause the victims of breadcrumbing to then, especially in romantic relationships, they want to always try to, I got to be nicer. I got to lure this person in. Why can't he or she just commit to me? So now it causes perhaps more desperate behavior. You're used to getting false hope and you can't distinguish between false hope or real hope or what's really going on here. So now in a way, especially in romantic relationships or also with a best friend, you may get more dependent or needy and all the ups and downs. It never feels stable. What's going on here, you're asking yourself. Well, for you, the person on the receiving end of it, this basically ties into your childhood. This is where you learn to tolerate unhealthy behavior from others. It's about your self-esteem, your self-worth. So focus on yourself, not on the person who's doing the breadcrumbing. Ask yourself, why am I putting up with this? Ask yourself, do I deserve better than how I'm being treated by these coworkers, by my family members, by my best friend, 
by my boyfriend or girlfriend? These are questions to ask yourself. And if you should be being treated better, then what are you going to do about that? It's about you, not about them. If you learn to settle for breadcrumbs growing up, that definitely is going to transfer into your adult life unless you understand where this is coming from, what's going on here. And for people doling out the breadcrumbs when they want to, they usually know exactly what they're doing. They're doing it for personal gain of some sort. They know how to be manipulative. And this is different from gaslighting, by the way. Breadcrumbing is all about leading somebody on, while gaslighting is a deliberate attempt to manipulate somebody. Get them to question their own thoughts, their beliefs, maybe even their own sanity. So while all these things may not be happening at once, they may happen in different stages over a long period of time, keep aware, keep aware of any patterns. Sometimes this type of abuse can be very sneaky and insidious, so you need to be very aware of it. Please leave me some comments below. Let me know if you've been tolerating breadcrumbing in your life. Love to hear any examples in the comments section. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.